Hi there and welcome back to another info video about the coming Heinlein patch for Stellaris. This is your host Emmanuel Kahn and uh, we're going through it step by step. I've taken some notes so um, <laughs> we won't read through all the text or stuff. Just going to, to the uh, pivotal points. So the Federation Alliance merger means basically that Alliance are gone. Alliance alliances are no longer a thing, like no one used them, they are claiming, because they were like mm, such an, an odd duck in the Stellaris diplomacy. Instead, um, you are making an alliance if you form a federation. So federations can now be composed of two minimum instead of four minimum members. And like they can be, can be expanded as you want. So uh, your alliance is now a federation. <laughs> Congratulations. Now there is something new associated with um, the alliances. That is the federation association status. You can do that with empires you want to be friends with your federation. And they are gaining a so-called partnership with a federation. And that partnership is basically a non-aggression pact with all that in, uh, is, uh, is encased within it. And that leads to every member of the Federation uh, gaining trust with them. Like up to 100 points of trust you can gain with that uh, non-aggression pact, with that partnership that is called Federation Association status. So that is coming. So there's a yeah, there's an expansion of the diplomacy in the Federation, which is pretty good, which makes that like more on a unit than before. Not like uh, a band of war brothers, but also really also a diplomacy unit. Um, and now a very, very big change. Planet habitability changes is that, but <laughs> it's much more than it like says. So um, first, um, they have changed the entire system. So uh, you can now pick a planet that is of the dry, wet or cold climates. After that, the habitability is set for your uh, species. So your main planet type, so one of these things here, is still 80% as before. And um, like everyone in these rows, uh, every planet in these rows has 60% for you. And... Um, Every planet in the other rows, like if you have that dry planet here, maybe it's a desert planet, then uh, you have other dry climates here, maybe Alpine or Savannah, I don't know. And um, you would have 60% for these. But for the other climates, you would only have 20% habitability. So <laughs> you would want like another race or a genetic modification for that or pretty high tech. But what this does is like... Um, it makes, yeah, we'll see how this works out, but it makes uh, the, 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 the whole um, universe a little bit less inhabitable without difficulties. But that is offset through the point that um, colonization of these planets is no longer tech-gated. So um, you don't have to research like um, as before Arctic colonization or something like that. But instead um, it is gated by the habitability. So you would be able to settle here without any problem as you need a minimum of 30% habitability to colonize somewhere. And um, yeah, for the other climates that is much more problematic. You would research some text for that to be able to settle there. So um, that is basically what all of this is about. And going along with that, they also modify the map generator. So here you have more galaxy setup options. It's like the map generator in like games like Civ 5. So you can now set the number, maximum number of fallen empires you want to have. Actually setting a fixed number is difficult due to the way they spawn and how it's affected by regular empires. So it's a maximum number that, that you set there. The fixed number is, yeah, you don't know how that works, but at least you can limit them. <laughs> you don't want too many of them. But you can also rise that up and <laughs> let, be, let yourself be surprised. Maybe it's all fallen empires around you. We'll see how that works out. Then there's the chance of habitable worlds spawning. So you can actually set 
the pace of colonization. Like, will these empires you play around with, will they be big? Will there be big fleets or will there be small fleets? Will the uh, planets be like fought over because there are so few of them or will they be like oh there's just another planet no it's worth starting a war about this and um, also now you were able to set advanced empires and now you can also set advanced empires uh, to not start near players or to start them near players like it was usual that you were lucky or unlucky and maybe had like that advanced empire that was warlike near you and they would just come to you and annihilate you. Now now you can stop that if you want it. If you want a challenge, like make them start near you. <laughs> and whether to use empire clustering, I think what they mean there is like if you can have one portion of your empire in, in one part of the galaxy and one another portion in a totally other part. And what this means is, I think, uh, you can set, yeah, you can set that, so you um, will have, like, a, a connected empire or not. Like, if you have many singular planets, possible or not, you, you need to have your whole area connected, so to say. So this, this makes a huge difference from the play style. Um, because, yeah, <laughs> you can see why. You can block other empires much more easily if you, your empire needs to be connected. If it doesn't, yeah, well, then that's no problem for you. You just need the tech to to travel far. And whether endgame crisis should be allowed to appear. Yeah, um, if you just want to win a game peacefully and, and play it out to the end with all the other empires or maybe try like another higher difficulty setting you maybe don't want the end game crisis to appear and uh, yeah so you can stop them if you want if you want if you want the challenge still maybe maybe there's also a setting then in the final version where you can like check which end game crisis should be appearing like the ai or the, like um other crisis the AI is probably the, the one you have heard most about, but there are also other pretty interesting crises. I don't want to spoil them, so just mentioning the AI then. Then there are sector improvements, which is very good because, yeah, the AI managing the sectors wasn't like the best thing and you didn't have like everything you could, you wanted to, to check or uncheck. So they have improved the AI and also, you can now say, is the sector allowed to enslave or emancipate? Very good, of course. If you're a slaver empire, this is really helpful. And uh, if you're not, <laughs> yeah, well, um, there's also a setting for um, the AI later on. So you can emancipate the AIs later so that will also be for non-slaver empires that use high-tech robots and such and whether the sector is allowed to build spaceports and construction ships that was usually allowed just allowed so you can now set if you want them to build spaceports automatically or just not um, that is also a big help like at the start you don't want them to build spaceports they are not that effective until like your your um, population reaches max um, then like if all of your population is set to work then you will build spaceports otherwise not so um, if you have a heavy just, just colonizing sector where you put resources in and all you don't want them to build spaceports you want them to expand like yeah they are they are um, they are crucial buildings on the on the surface and whether the sector is allowed or not to build military stations. This will replace the military sector focus. That is very helpful because the military sector uh, was some kind of thing like you, you had that military sector and there were a lot of defense stations there and military and all of that, but it didn't do anything. Now you can have a research sector with a good defense, like with good military stations in it, which is much, much better because you will usually um, build the the military you use actively you will build that yourself and they will also consider a sector toggle for building and maintaining local defense fleets but they don't think they'll have time for it in hindline and yeah i i think it's it's debatable to include that but maybe some of you remember master of orion the, the third part yeah everything was automatized 
there, so um, that wasn't something really good. It was like I would be debating if they, if you could give them like local defense fleets, and they would then be able to patrol between different systems or something like that. That would be pretty cool. Or you could like set how much they would build automatically um, in their program or or something like that. Then that would be like it would need a slider that you could adjust for the local defense fleets, not just toggle on or off. Then it would it would be <laughs> a very big help. Now that's also dev diary number forty three. We were at forty two now, but I <laughs> I'll do that in the separate video because it's so long and this is quite I think I I really like the Heinlein patch coming. It's coming mid October probably. Some somewhere in October as I said though. This is already yeah, I I'd say it's at least mid October, if not late October. But there will be a beta version before that for sure. So you can test it a little bit in October. And at the end of October I think it will be released. So um I'm pretty excited. <laughs> I'm making a new video, also a text and talk about the Dev Diary 43 and what's what's said in that about the Heinlein patch. I'm I'm pretty excited for it. So uh, thank you for watching. Now, um, if you're interested in more Stellaris, I have like made two guides, not not something really big, but that will help you at the start for governors and for kickstarting your home world, just, just the very start of the game. And um, check out the, the Let's Play I've made. Like It's a Let's Role Play, so it's a bit special with some house rules, but we're <laughs> very late in the game. It's very interesting. We're just now in the end game crisis. Uh, and what you'll see there will scare you. <laughs> it's a Cthulhu slightly horror um, role play of Stellaris, which you also find on the channel and which I've linked in the in the info cards. And uh, of course, if you like this and want more Stellaris info general, some guides that are coming, and yeah, more of the Let's Play, then <laughs> just subscribe. It's the easiest thing to do. I would be very happy to have you on board. So see you in the next video and thank you for watching.